Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's faves. I think we're up to like number 135, right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness, 135. And today I want to talk to you about Ravel's Daphnis and Chloe. Now, everybody loves Daphnis and Chloe, right? Is there anyone who doesn't? I'm talking about the whole thing, the whole enchilada, the complete symphony choreographique. Marvel's largest work and most elaborate work. I have to confess, there have been moments when I adore it and moments when I'm kind of sick of it, <laughs> only because it is such a highly perfumed, stylized piece of music. And there are just, you know, Chloe's dance of supplication, you know, what um, what um. It's like, oh, come on, supplicate already, won't you? It has a few dead spots, some of it. But on the other hand, the beautiful spots are so beautiful. And the scoring is glorious. And it has more harp glissandos per 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 30 seconds than any other work in the repertoire. I remember seeing it live, you know, and it's just two harps and they're just going for like 40 minutes, you know. I mean, there's just a lot of that going on. It's so voluptuous. It really is. It's a beautiful, beautiful work. And it has been magnificently recorded. My goodness, there are so many great recordings of it. Let's let's just list a few, because I did a talk about it, so you know what they are. There's two by Charles Munch. There's Pierre Monteux, who conducted the premiere. Let's not forget. There's there's Charles Dutrois, who's excellent. There's there's Cuitens, it's just amazing. There's Manuel Rosenthal, who's fabulous. There's Jean Martinal, who's just absolutely terrific. I mean, you just the the list goes on and on and on. It really does. And that is why my particular choice as Dave's fave is Azawa. Ha <laughs> ha, fooled you, didn't I? Seriously, I, I there's something about this performance. It, like everything Azawa did, you know, I could do a whole talk on hard acts to follow. That is, conductors who get trashed because they follow somebody who is later determined to have been the be-all and end-all. I just talked about the Dvorak Seventh with Neumann, who followed Anne Sherrill and got trashed. And then there was Barbaroli, who followed Toscanini and got trashed. And then there's Ozawa, who followed Sherrill Munch, basically. And, I mean, he actually followed Leinsdorf, but there was Munch and Leinsdorf, nobody liked him either. And, and then Ozawa popped up and he got trashed. But he was such a fantastic conductor of French music. He really was. He had the aesthetic down to a to a fairly well. And he had like the greatest French orchestra of the universe to play it. And these this Ravel cycle, the whole thing here, is so, so good. It's beautifully recorded. It's exciting. It's unbelievably fresh and well played. And this Daphnis and Chloe is is fantastic. I like it because because of its its cohesion. It really does sound like a symphony choreographique. You feel the symphonic underpinnings of the work. It holds together very well. There aren't any of those occasional dead spots. Chloe supplicates when she's supposed to supplicate. You know, you don't want to just run away and slap her around and say, supplicate, damn you, supplicate, you know. It's the one part of the ballet that really kind of drives me crazy because I don't think it's that musically distinguished, but you'd never know it here. You really, really wouldn't. It's just gorgeous. And the sonics are fabulous. Everything is in the right place. Everything just blossoms. There's a certain atmosphere and glow to the sound. It's just really, really a magnificent performance that never gets time of day because the competition is so strong. I mean, I get it. I understand that. I really do. But when I first heard this cycle after listening to all that other stuff, um, there was something about it that just struck me as absolutely magical. Just a rightness and an inevitability that, um, I, I mean, either, I'm not going to say no other performance has. I read your comments and you say the same thing. Well, I've heard this and it just has this and I've never heard another performance like it. To which the response I always want to make is, well, then you haven't heard enough other performances. Because there are plenty like it, believe me, and there are plenty like this. But my personal, personal choice, just my 
personal favorite is this one for the combination of conception and fantastic playing and great engineering. And it just, for me, cheats the clock. It really does. It makes me want to, want to never let it go. And that's really what I want to hear in a great performance. Some of those others do too. I'm not saying I won't listen to them once in a while. I do. I listen to lots of them once in a while. And I look forward to new ones when they come. But I still adore this. So it's my personal favorite. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.